So as we're doing this chapter on forces at a distance, let's compare our two big forces that we've been learning about. We learned about gravitational force, and we learned about electrical force. Gravitational force was with Newton, and electrical force is Coulomb. Now, we know they both follow the inverse square law. That means if you go twice as far away, it's one-fourth the force. Three times, one-ninth the force. Four times, one-sixteenth the force. That is true for both gravity and for electrical force. However, gravity force is due to mass. And electrical force is due to charge. All right, so they are caused by different things. Another important thing to compare and contrast these is that gravita gravity, the gravitational force, can only attract. But electrical forces can attract and repel. And the last thing that compares them is that the gravitational force is very, very weak. But the electrical force is very, very strong. So the constants, remember, right? So the big G, the big G, the big G constant is much, much, much less than the little k. And it's due to mass, and it's due to charge, and then it attracts and repels, and it only attracts. Now, sign have meaning electrical force. A gravity force, technically, Fg is always negative, which means it always attracts. Right, so you'll see that sometimes we don't concentrate on that because Fg, um, the force of gravity is always attraction, so we don't really care. But for electrical, it makes a difference. So negative means that they attract, and positive means they repel. Because if you think about it, it's k q q over r squared. So if this is negative and this is positive, that will give me a negative. And if this is um, positive, negative, right? It'll still come out negative and they attract. But if this is positive, let's do that different color. If this is positive and positive, then it comes out positive and they repel. And if it's negative and negative, then again, it comes out positive and they repel. So my suggestion is don't use the signs for calculating it. Use the signs to determine the direction of the force. So while it is true about the positives and negatives, I find it much more confusing to plug them in. And then you end up with like negatives under the square root because you don't remember the negative with the force. So if you just use magnitude, that is the number, and don't worry about the positive and negative for calculating, I find that best. However, you do need to be able to determine the direction. So let me give you an example of how you can do that. So here's a positive and a negative uh, charge, and they're next to each other. So we want to know what direction the force on the negative charge. So I see this positive. The positive is going to attract it, so I know the force is going to be to the left because it's going to be attracted. Um, Let's make them, in this case, let's make them both positive. So what is the direction on the positive charge on the right? Okay. So if I look at this one and I go, okay, they're going to repel. So now I can see the force is going to be to the right. So that's the easiest way to look at it. Um, just use your common sense and know if they repel or if they attract. That tells you the direction of the force. That's simple. Um, and then the other thing to understand is that um, an electron of charge is very, very small compared to a coulomb. Remember I said that a coulomb is huge, it's like a lightning bolt, and an electron is tiny, 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 tiny. So a lot of times our problems use microcoulombs, which is 10 to the negative 6, so micro kind of looks like our mu, right, equals microcoulombs. That's our Greek mu which is option M on your keyboard. It's something I've learned this year, right? Um, but usually what we do is we bunch them all together and call it an amp. So you may have heard of amperes or amps and, you know, how many amps are you pulling? Um, so they basically took a bunch of, of these electrons and stuck them together, right, and said, okay, here is a, this is an amp, 
right? So the question is, how many electrons does it take to make one amp? But an amp is one coulomb per second. So we know that one electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So how many of these electrons do I need to make a uh, coulomb? So if I'm doing like a conversion and I said here's one coulomb, I'd put 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs per one electron. I would see that the cool. So if I plug that into my calculator and I do 1 over 1.6, I can see that one electron, this number here, would be equal to 6.25 times... 10 to the 18th, which means the answer to this question right here is there are 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons in one amp. That's a lot of electrons. That's it.